So in this video, we're going to be talking about the reduced density of states, uh, often sometimes called the optical density of states. And this is what's fundamentally going to allow us to treat our band structure, so our conduction band and our valence band, as just a bunch of two-level systems uh, with energy E2 and E1. So we said in the last video that if we've got an incoming photon of a certain energy, so E photon is equal to just H bar omega, um, we said that that photon can only cause a transition to happen uh, when the conduction band is exactly the right distance away from the valence band. And that distance is just our photon energy. And we said that that was because of conservation of momentum. So conservation of momentum. And that if the optical momentum is approximately zero, then our initial momentum on our band diagram, where this is just uh, the momentum coordinate, must equal the final momentum. Or in other words, our electrons have to make vertical transitions. So our electrons have to make vertical transitions in our band diagram. But as you might be thinking right now, um, these states, uh, so these two different energy levels, let's call this guy E2 and this guy E1, this is exactly our two-level system. So this is exactly the two-level system that we've been analyzing to death using Fermi's golden rule. Uh, so using Fermi's golden rule. We actually calculated the transition rate, let's call it W, uh, from state one to state two. And that was just equal, uh, let me just write it down here for completeness, uh, QE naught, so E naught was our electric field amplitude, over two H bar times our matrix element, psi one X psi two, which we said would someone else will calculate for us. Um, this magnitude squared times two pi times a delta function. So delta of, the frequency difference between our two energy levels uh, minus the light frequency. And so this we interpreted as if we have a bunch of electrons, um, this rate W is just the percentage of electrons that get, that absorb a photon, that absorb a photon per unit time. And so now all we need to figure out is how many electrons do we have in this state? And how many, uh, or equivalently, how many states uh, do we have for them to transition to? So how many states do we have here for them to transition to? And we actually know that number. Uh, like we can actually calculate that. That's just our density of states. So in this case, this is our density of states in the valence band. And really, we should also multiply by the Fermi factor, but I'm going to ignore that for now. And we're just going to deal with the density of states. Now, there's one subtlety here which makes this a little challenging to deal with, is we're no longer dealing with just uh, energy E. So we're no longer dealing with the absolute energy level uh, in our, our band structure, but we're dealing with the photon energy or the incoming photon energy E photon. So really, we would like the total number of states uh, instead of before we had uh, our valence band, uh, so GV DE, this was the total number of states in a given slice of energy, we would like to know the available states uh, as a function of our photon energy, uh, DE photon. And this is the reduced uh, density of states. And why it's reduced, uh, you'll see in a minute. So if we just redraw our band structure uh, below, we see that if, say we've got a certain photon energy and we're interested in the number of available states near that photon energy. So we increase our photon energy by just a little bit. Um, so this was, our, this was our photon energy, E photon. And this is our photon energy, E photon plus DE photon. Now, all we need to do is figure out an expression for E photon uh, as a function of momentum. And we can play all of our old tricks with the density of states. So if 
you remember our, our previous videos deriving the density of states, we used a uh, case space and we counted up all of our possible states. And to do that, we modeled uh, our conduction band and our valence band. We assumed that this shape was a perfect parabola. And that's always going to be accurate near a local minima, right? Because you've always got, uh, you can just Taylor series expand your, your function. And if you remember, we said that the energy in the conduction band, uh, so the energy above the edge of the conduction band, I'll just call that EC, uh, which is unfortunate. Let's call it delta EC, actually, so we're less unfortunate. Uh, that was just h bar squared k squared over 2 times the electron effective mass. And this is exactly analogous to the kinetic energy of a particle uh, because it's just the momentum squared over twice the mass, exactly the same thing. So we're effectively modeling our electron as a sort of free particle with a different mass. And similarly, uh, we can write a similar expression for the energy below the valence band. So let's call that delta EV. So that's just the energy below the valence band in terms of the momentum. That's just h bar squared k squared over 2 times the whole mass, mh. So if we know the momentum, so if we know the momentum at which our transition is happening, then we can figure out the total photon energy. So the total photon energy then is just going to be this band gap. Uh, so it's just going to be eg plus uh, delta ec, so plus the difference uh, the energy above the conduction band as a function of momentum plus delta EV as a function of momentum. And just expanding that out in terms of the momentum, we just get, uh, we've got an h bar squared k squared over two times the electron mass and an h bar squared k squared uh, over two times the whole mass. And since ultimately we want to go back to k space to derive the density of states, uh, we want to solve for k. So we can, we can do that just by subtracting the band gap energy, multiplying by stuff and taking a square root. Uh, and if you do that, you'll get that K is just E photon minus the band gap energy times two times what's called the reduced mass, MR, uh, divided by H bar squared. And this MR is basically just like Okay, let's look at these two terms. They look awfully similar. It would be nice if we could combine them, uh, and we can. So h bar squared k squared over two, uh, one over me plus one over mh. We can just call this uh, one over the reduced mass. And that, uh, that just makes our lives easier in terms of writing stuff out. And so if you use this k to derive the density of states, then you'll get what's what we call a reduced density of states as a function of the photon energy, which uh, can be written in terms of h or h bar. I'm just uh, copying the expression from Neiman. Um, so 2mr to the 3 halves divided by h cubed uh, times the square root of e photon minus our band gap energy. And so this is our new uh, density of states. This corresponds to uh, the number of electrons we have available in this state E1. So the number of states, uh, per unit volume at least, would just be the density of states times our differential element DE photon. This is the number of states available in E1 per unit volume. And so now all we need to do to figure out the total absorption is basically just multiply these two by each other. Now there's some subtleties because we're gonna need to do an integral somewhere and we're gonna need to deal with this delta function. Uh, we're probably also gonna change frequency to energy because that'll make our lives easier. But essentially, we're, we're just about done. We're just about ready to calculate the absorption coefficient. And so that's going to be the subject of our next video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like or a subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.